Who killed Jesus? You may have heard the anti-Semitic statement that the Jews killed Jesus, which has done very serious damage to the message of the gospel among Jewish people, but is it correct? Wasn't it Roman soldiers who executed him? Or perhaps Pilate who should be held responsible? Or all of these ideas missing the point? This line has been used as an excuse for brutal violence and murder against Jews again and again, and as a result, Jewish people have seen Christianity, and even Jesus himself, as distinctly dangerous. This persecution was widespread, especially during the Middle Ages, but the line that the Jews killed Jesus didn't stop then. Some people still accuse the Jewish people of the crime of killing God to this day. So where does it come from, and who really did kill Jesus? There are a couple of reasons for this line of thinking. First, in John's Gospel, even though John himself is Jewish, he would write the Jews when he was referring to the religious leaders of the time. To someone without the understanding that John, Jesus himself, and all his family and friends were Jewish, it certainly sounds like the Jews were the bad guys in his book. But clearly, that's not what the Jewish disciple meant. He was talking about a specific group of religious people in authority. Second, there is a statement made by the crowd when asking for the crucifixion of Jesus. They say, his blood be on us and on our children. For many years, this has been seen as a curse on the Jewish people as a whole for crucifying Jesus. But is that how God sees it? As we have said, John, Mary, Jesus, all the disciples, and the entire first church were Jewish. So it is nonsense that all Jewish people killed Jesus, even though a majority did reject him and the crowd demanded his crucifixion. Even though they asked for a curse on themselves and their children, clearly not every Jewish person on earth was in that crowd. And God says that curses continue for four generations, not forever. If we want to get technical, the people carrying out the execution and nailing Yeshua to the cross were Italian soldiers. But the real truth of the matter is that it was our sins that were responsible. Ultimately, it was not nails that fixed him on the cross, but his love for you and I that kept him there, and his determination to pay for our sin in full. The blame actually falls on each one of us, without exception, because we have each committed sins which took him to the cross. It was the sovereign plan of God, right from the beginning of time, to send his son to die for our sins. He promises in Genesis 3 that the seed of the woman would crush Satan's head, a promise fulfilled by the victorious death and resurrection of the Son of Man. The whole Old Testament prophesies and points towards this incredible act of sacrifice that would defeat the enemy and the power of sin. Isaiah 53 prophesies quite clearly that the Messiah would suffer and pay the price for sin by God's own design and plan. Here's what it says in verses 10 and 11. It was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Jesus knew that this was his mission and was totally willing to lay down his life for us, knowing that no one could kill him without his permission. He talks about his life sacrifice in John 10, 18. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. Again, when he is arrested by the authorities in the Garden of Gethsemane, he says, Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled, that it must be so? This was a man who knew that he had all authority and power to resist arrest and overcome those who would kill him, but he knew that God had a different plan. So Jesus went to the cross of his own accord and was not unwillingly killed by anybody. He did not want to be crucified, but he willingly said to God, Not my will, but yours. He stepped into his destiny on purpose, and in doing so, he stepped on Satan's head. It was the most important weekend in history and the greatest act of willing love sacrifice the world has ever known.